I'm Betty Staley. For 25 years, I was a classroom teacher in a Waldorf school. I helped to found the high school at the Sacramento Waldorf School. <clears throat> I founded the Waldorf Teacher Training Program, high school teacher training program at Rudolph Center College. Um, I continue to do that. I'm interim president of Rudolph Center College. Um, I advise schools all over the world, lecture, write, and have particularly in the last 10, 12 years, helped to um, develop and found and develop uh, high schools in, Sacra in, excuse me, in California, both public and private, public and independent. I'd like to start by telling you a story that was, well, a question that was asked to me the night that I arrived in Sacramento from New York. And it was a board member who said, do you think that a Waldorf school without a high school is like a chicken with its head cut off? And at that time, I was a class teacher. And I thought, well, no, it's not a complete school if it doesn't have a high school. And so this image of the head being cut off is a very interesting one. So if we think about it like this, that education is a journey. And in the early years, the preschool, kindergarten years, we're getting ready for the journey. So what do we need? We need teachers who love their children, who understand play, who understand all of the foundation that goes into academic learning and creates an environment that is safe and beautiful and that al allows for play and the children's introduction to nature. But it's really all pre-school in the truest sense because we know that when children experience those years in a healthy way, then they go into their elementary school and they're, they're whole. And the elementary school is introducing the children to the world, experiencing it through hands-on activities, through imagination, through this feeling of the beauty of the world, through the great uh, myths and fairy tales and legends and biographies to science and nature so that the child begins to feel what a place the world is. I want, I'm so happy to know all about it. The teacher is the key. The teacher has to understand the children's development and be able to ask, who are these children in this place and time? You could say that the class teacher and the teachers in the elementary school are, are generalists. They're, ta they're Renaissance people. They take the children through all these different subjects and they represent humanity. In the high school, you have specialists because the high school student wants to know, what do you know? And are you, in, are you in contact with the world? Do you know what's going on? Are you, do you know the trends, the fads, the mu movies, the music? They want to know all of that. And so the task in the high school is really to be in touch with the world. And of course, when they get into 11th and 12th grade, they're taking PSATs and ACTs, and they're doing all the things to, that they need to do to get into the next stage of life. In fact, Rudolf Steiner said, our task in Waldorf education is to prepare the children for the next stage of their life. The moving into the high school is developing the thinking, where the young person is now beginning to take hold of his or her own thinking, so they can look back at the treasures that the teacher has brought, and now they can say, hmm, how did that happen? What's the meaning of this? How does this affect my life? How does this relate to what's happening in this year outside? So it's all about getting ready for the future and developing the kind of thinking that allows you to be able to be uh, your own thinker, that you're able to be critical, at the same time you have idealism. And so it's really that, that development, that completion of the educational process before they go out into the job or to college. But to have them go out knowing all these areas of the world and that they are capable of getting the big picture. And the big picture is the key here, that they're not specialized. Because we live in a time where we don't know what the world is going to be like in 10 years. And they have to be able to think their way through it in a whole systems way and not say, I'm preparing for this job. It's not what's going to be like. And it's not even like that today, we know. But they have to be able to think outside the box. They have to be critical. They have to understand the, the meaningfulness of life, what's happening to the planet, what's happening to the relationship between cultures. And so this is our work. So we could say that in the beginning, we're preparing for this journey. Then we take them on the journey in the elementary school, and in the high school they're meeting with specialists who are going to say, if you go into the journey this way, here's what you need to know. As we look at the survey of Waldorf graduates, what's very interesting is are the kind of comments that are made by employers. They think outside the box. They like people. They can try new things. This is important. This is very important. They're smart, but how are they smart? 
They're smart because they can see not only what is, but what has to be. And we have to differentiate between building skills and building capacities. Waldorf education builds capacities, but it needs time and we can't hurry it. If you look at the early years in the grades, first, second, third grade, so on, <clears throat> what do you see? They're learning skills. If you look at a painting, you say, why do the paintings all look alike? Well, because they're learning how to use the brush. They're learning how to control the water. They're learning the skill. Of course they have opportunities for free painting, there's no question, but what you see is an exercise. And it's like building a muscle. You don't go out and run a marathon. You take time, you build a muscle, you practice, you practice, and at a certain point, you feel ready to go. And so you look at those paintings and they are not alike. At first you say, oh yeah, they're all the painting, same painting from that fairy tale. But then you start looking and each one is a story. And so this is what the teacher's looking at. And the child has, is living inside with that story. It's real. And that they express it by putting it out and finishing. Maybe this one has to have a bigger tree. Maybe the squirrel did that. So they add their own, but it's a beginning. So we have to know what, why we're doing what we're doing. Now, when you get up into the sixth, seventh, eighth grade, they are creating their own projects in their different subjects. So, um, and they get choices of what they want to do. Get into the high school and they're, they're choosing how they want to evaluate their work. They're choosing the kind of projects they do to the, all the choices there now, but it's because they have gained these skills. Form is needed, but too much form becomes rigid. Then there's freedom. They need freedom. How much freedom at each stage of development? Too much freedom becomes license. They don't know what they're doing. Not enough freedom is rigid. So it's balance. In every grade of the school, it's how much form does this class need? How much freedom? So you might look at it and say, oh, it looks formed. They're sitting in desks. That's part of the form. But then they get up from the desks. They are walking around and they're standing on top of the chairs and they're doing exercises and there's lots of freedom. But what is freedom? Is it running around? So movement is very important in Waldorf education, purposeful movement. If you go into a lot of kindergartens today, you see not purposeful movement. You see movement that's inspired by television characters or movies. It's not real movement from the child, it's imposed. So it's <laughs> and different voices, and I'm a robot kind of thing. That's not purposeful movement. Purposeful movement is when you see something that needs to be done and you can go and do it. We live at a very interesting time. I mean, it's an exciting time. I'm so happy to be alive at this time. But change is so rampant. And the changes, particularly that have happened in my lifetime, have to do with the way we look at time and space and the way we look at child development, how we look at adult development, how we look at the way we relate to each other. First of all, the pace has become so fast that we are just pushing time, we're contracting time. So we take a child's development that needs 21 years, and then we say, okay, at age four, they should be able to do this. Yes, they could do it if you push them, but what's missing? What are they not doing? So this whole question of let's contract time. Look at our lives. Time is contracted all the time. Look at how we keep time. The difference of an analog clock to a digital clock. An analog clock, you have a circle, and you always see the relationship of the, mo the minutes to the hour. You do not have that with digital. It's da, 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 da. And that's the life we're living today. It's a digital life, meaning we have forgotten the whole relationship of context. So uh, this relates to form and freedom, too. And it relates to the way we look at our children, the way we parent, the way we teach. So we've become outcomes-based. We are looking at things in terms of what can come out of it. So is it profit? So we look at things as products. And parents today are often looking at their children as a product. And the school is supposed to produce a child of a certain kind. And this has nothing to do with what a human being is. And reverence has to do with placing things in context. So if you're going to garden, you cannot rush it. You have to give time for the, the soil to be dug twice. You have to open up the soil. You have to put the seeds in. And then you start and you water and you care and it takes time. And in the kindergarten, when you garden, you don't tell the children we have to be so careful because it takes time. You do it and they care for it. And it's all doing without explanation. In the grade school, they study gardening. They do gardening. They learn about grains around the world. They, they have a garden. They plant and then they harvest and they cook with it. 
So the whole process, in fact, process is one of the biggest words for Waldorf education. It's all about what is the process and a product comes out of it. But it's not product driven, which means it's not driven to race things, make them so fast that you, you can produce. That's what we're doing to our children in, in our education, not just in public education. We are looking at our children as products. And this is, it's distorted the whole way of life. Look at how we look at the planet. It's what we can get out of it. It's the product. It's not the earth as something living that needs tending and caring and seven generations, right? If we can survive to have seven generations. Reverence is taking the time to care and nurture. And we have to live it. And you live it from the moment the baby is born. And you live it in education. And you live it in the way we relate as adults. And until our society can begin to reawaken, because it was there, reawaken to reverence, uh, we're not going to be able to deal with the really powerful questions which technology can either help us with or harm us with. So it's, a, it's an inner quality and it takes time. Right now, Waldorf education is an international movement. It's a very, very fast-growing movement. First Waldorf School, 1919, in Germany. There are schools in Thailand, there are schools in India, there are schools in the Philippines, there are schools in Vietnam now, uh, South America, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, uh, Nigeria, um, Israel. Uh, there's some projects going on in the West Bank that may lead to a Waldorf school. And then you keep going, it's, it's all over because it's really an education for our time. The challenge is that you take an education that began in 1919 in Germany, right after the First World War, and you say, how does that relate to the school in Tokyo? The key of this is, is of course, the teachers. And it's the teachers who immerse themselves in Waldorf education, in what Rudolf Steiner brought as one of the greatest gifts of our time and into the future. We are only just beginning. And now we have over a thousand schools, and there are more all the time, in every different kind of circumstance. Waldorf School of Peninsula, what an interesting place to have a Waldorf School, in the middle of Silicon Valley, a place of new thinkers, entrepreneurs, uh, startup people, venture capitalists. It's a really interesting spot. The task we took on was, how is it going to be a Waldorf School? How is it going to be unique to Silicon Valley? What will it offer all of the Waldorf schools? So there's really something that's going to be new coming out of it. That's its challenge. And to answer these questions, you have to go again into who is the human being? What is the child? What do children need? When is the time that's right? It's very common today to go to a restaurant and see a family having dinner and the child has an iPad and is doing that. And what's not happening? Communication. Communication. They're wonderful techniques and tools, and we all use them, and we're grateful for them. We can't imagine not having them anymore. So what is the challenge for Silicon Valley, Waldorf School, is to really work out of courage of the teachers to say, when does it belong? We're trying to create in Waldorf Schools a space of freedom where they are not walking products. We're trying to create a space where the human being can thrive. I feel that this school has done this in a very conscious way. And I say conscious, it didn't just happen, they work on it. They have a, a very um, well-educated faculty that's coming from the world of higher education. They have quite a number of PhDs, but that's not, they're not there because they're PhDs. They're there because they feel more value in what they're doing and working with these Waldorf High School students than they felt in their previous work. And that's a really big thing. And that's beginning to happen all over the Waldorf movement. <laughs>